He's a philosopher. He's thinking. Mr. Mike. Oh. I guess we should do it again. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. <laughs> Hello, my friends. It's ABS online session again. We do it every Friday, same day, same time. Today is a pleasure to invite Mr. Yua from Fur Conservation Thailand to talk about the beautiful birds and birding tourism in Thailand. So, Ayua, please. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Uh, well, my name is Ayua, and I am currently working um, at the Bird Conservation Society of Thailand. And so, um, I'm supposed to um, give a talk about birds of Thailand. Um, so, should I switch to my presentation now? Please, thank you. Okay, sure. All right, I hope that it's showing. <clears throat> Everyone can see my screen now? Yep, very good. Okay, yeah, so I, um, I came up with this very cheesy name, Fantastic Birds of Thailand and Where to Find Them, because that's basically what I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, I guess Thailand is pretty well known um, destination for birders, especially in Asia. So you, um, so these are probably not new for <laughs> for you guys. But yeah, I I just want to give introduction to um, new birders who probably are not um, very familiar with birds in Thailand. And okay, yeah. So here's the outline of my presentation. So I'm gonna start talking um, about birds in each region of Thailand. And here I divide it um, into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven regions in Thailand. Um, so the first one would be the Western Northwest here up in the, um, on the upper left, and then the Eastern North, Northwest, and then the Northeast, and then the West in the central Thailand, southeast Thailand, and then in the southern Thailand. Um, we only have half an hour, so I'm gonna go pretty quickly. <laughs> so let's jump into the first region of Thailand. Um, so the Western Northwest. So basically this part of Thailand is actually where I am from as well. So I am from Chiang Mai, which is um, the biggest city in the North. And um, so this area in the nor uh, in northern part of Thailand would be mostly mountains, um, a lot of mountains, high mountains. So um, mostly the habitats that we have are mountainous evergreen forest, cl cloud forest, and then um, grassland on, on the hills. And most of the birds here that we have are similar to those of in the Himalayas, um, in the Himalayas, and also from um, birds in China. And in winter, we have a lot of vagrants, a lot of um, rare birds occur in, in during the winter time. So I'm going to be going through species by species, the ones that um, when you visit this part of Thailand, um, you shouldn't, shouldn't miss. <laughs> so for the first one here, I am introducing this um, endemic subspecies. Well, in Thailand, we don't have that many endemic birds, unlike a lot of um, uh, Southeast Asian countries like the Philippines or Vietnam, where there are a lot of endemic species. But since Thailand is located kind of in the middle, so um, we have a lot of birds that are similar to different countries around us, but we have so few endemic species. So I'm, I'm for my presentation, I'm going to be highlighting those few endemic species. And here, the first one is the um, endemic subspecies of green-tailed sunbird, 
where it is only found on the top of Doin t h a n o n which is one of the most visited birding destinations in Thailand, because it's also one of uh, no, it's also the highest um, mountain peak in Thailand as well, and only at the top of Doin t h a n o n where you find this um, subspecies of green-tailed sunbird, which looks Different from other subspecies by having the the red, uh, scarlet red breast patch. Um, and the next one is also um, one of the most um, wanted species for birders coming to Thailand, especially bird photographers, because it's a a very um, beautiful photogenic um, bird, which is the Mrs. Hume's pheasant. And in Thailand, there's a place where Uh, where I think most visiting birders have been there, it's called Doi Lang or um, Doi Sanju. It's um, pretty much the same place. Doi Sanju, we give the name to the western part of Doi Lang. And at at this particular area, you can find this beautiful pheasant um, quite regularly um, throughout the year. But they become more, they become easier in winter time. Because it's when the the males come out to display for the females, and apart from that, um, in rainy season we also have um, the highlights um, that that bring that attract a lot of birders visiting the northern mountains during the wet season, which is the green c o c h u a So this species is a is a Is normally is easier um, to see during the wet season because it's the breeding time for these for for this rare species. Um, during winter, it's more difficult to find because they because of the shy um, habit and they like to sit very still in the canopy, so it's very difficult to find. And also, the next one is one of the most wanted species, especially even for Thai people. Um, it's the Himalayan k u c h i a and this one is also one of the star birds for Doi Lang, where um, you can see them just by walking along the road. Mostly, when you go to Doi Lang, you basically just walk along this very long road, going up and down the hills. And Himalayan k u c h i a is one of the most um, Wanted species, and here in this photo is a male. As you can see, it's a, it has very colorful um, plumage, and the female would have um, instead of chestnut back, it would have like a bit duller um, mantle with blackish streaking. And the other species that is also um, Uh, a lot of visiting birders um, would like to see when they visit northern Thailand is the giant nut hatch, because this one is, um, apart from being a rare bird in Thailand, it is also globally uh, threatened. Um, it is currently uh, classified as endangered, I think. And at Doi Lang, you can also find it pretty regularly among the pine forest. It's a species that like to Um, that 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 can be found mostly in pine and oak forest, a mixed pine and oak forest, and it's also the biggest um, nut patch in Thailand as well. It, well, if you see it, um, sometimes you can even mistake it for uh, a woodpecker because of the size. It's much bigger than most of the nut hatches. And also at Doi Lang, um, there's one bird that is. Well, it's not too rare, but um, you go there and then you most likely get to see it. Um, it's the spot-breasted parrotbill, and this one, uh, this one is also found only in a small part of Thailand in the northern um, northern mountains in the in the northwest. And at Doi Lang, it can be very very um, confiding. You can photograph it um, really at close range. It's pretty friendly. And this one prefers the grassland habitat. So, um, unlike most of the birds that I, I showed, um, this one you have to go through that, through the open forest habitat, grassy area where you can find it. And most people visiting Thailand in winter time, so you get to see a lot of um, 
migratory birds. For example, at Doi Lang, there's, there, there's this very famous ultramarine flycatcher where uh, birders have been visiting and taking photos of it for many, many years. And it still continues to show up at the same spot. So it's one of the birds that, that you cannot miss when you visit Doi Lang. And apart from that, in winter, we have a lot of um, migratory thrushes. And this one is probably one of the, the rarest species. Well, not the rarest species in Thailand, but um, overall globally, this one, um, the gray-sided thrush is, is now classified as being globally vulnerable. But in Thailand, it's, it can be found regular, regularly in winter especially on the um, high mountains, for example, Doin Thanon, where I photographed this photo. It, it can be quite easily seen at the fruiting trees. So um, if you have any question, <laughs> you can always jump in. So <laughs> I don't feel <laughs> lonely just talking by myself. <laughs> All right. Um, and then move on to the um, few other resident species um, in different kinds of habitats. So in the riverine habitats, we have this um, big kingfisher, the crested kingfisher, which, which is the largest kingfisher here that we, ha that we have in Thailand. And even though it is very localized and um, a very scarce bird anywhere, but in Northern Thailand, we have a um, a location in Chiang Da where you can see this bird breeding um, regularly every year. And this one is a male um, with some rufous on the collar. And also moving on to a different kind of habitat, we have this Jordan's bush hat, which is um, what, one of the most significant species of the grassland in the north, in, in the northern Thailand. And it is a, well, it's not globally threatened, but nas uh, nationally threatened due to habitat um, loss, mainly because this species prefer um, wetlands and also um, natural grassland. So with the, the change of um, agricultural um, system with the intensive um, rice farming system that is going on throughout Thailand. So this bird becomes much scarcer. And also um, the reed beds along the river are also mostly um, replaced by um, farmland or urban area. So Jordan's bush hat has become pretty rare recently. Yeah. And also in winter, we have um, a lot of wintering yellow-breasted buntings which are um, which which is now globally uh, critically endangered because of the um, the catching in pretty much any um, country that it migrates through. <laughs> so we used to um, have it a lot more in Thailand in the past, and then the the population the population just crashed, and now we have. Um, records coming from just few um, places where this bird can still be found regularly. And in the north, we have this area where um, a lot of visiting birders go to in um, Thaton and Mai Paddies, where you can still see yellow-breasted bunting pretty um, frequently in winter. Um, but the numbers still very um, well, rarely exceed um, 100 or 1,000, which is which used to be the, 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 the norm in the past. And then we move to the wetland habitat. And in winter, we have bear's poacher as well, which is also one of the, um, the most um, uh, endangered species um, in, the, in, in Asia, in the East Asian Australasian flyway. And in winter, luckily, we still we can still see this bird um, in the north, in the wetlands in the north. For example, Chiang San Lake, which is one of the most visited um, sites 
um, in, in Northern Thailand. And it's also famous for ducks, not just the bear's poshard, but also other species of ducks as well. But bear's poshard is something that, um, that birders um, are mostly looking out for because of its rarity. And then I, I'll move on to the, um, the eastern part of the Northwest. This gets a little bit confusing, but I wanna, uh, I wanna separate the two because of the difference in um, the birds. Um, so mostly in, um, in the eastern part of the Northwest, it's also um, a mountainous region, but there, uh, the mountains here are lower than in the Northwest. And it has a lot more um, drier forest, like dry dipter carp or um, dry evergreen forest and mixed deciduous forest with bamboos. And the species found here in the Eastern part of the Northwest are a bit different from the Western part. And one of the most, um, one of the most iconic species of the eastern part of the Northwest is the green peafowl. So the green peafowl is, well, is globally endangered now, but in the trend of the population in Thailand is, um, um, has been increasing um, unlike in other countries around us. Um, so the green peafowl, especially in, in, in the North um, has been increasing so much that it even causes um, some human wildlife con conflict as well, because the peafowls during um, the harvesting season, the peafowls also come out from the forest and then they feed on the rice and on the corn and, other, um, and on other crops as well. So um, that creates some sort of tension between the local people as well. So um, BCST is also now involving in um, a conservation project on preserving this green peafowl and finding a way um, for both the um, peafowl and the local people to kind of live together. And on the mountains in the, um, in the north, in the, in, in the eastern part of the northwest, we also have um, this Himalayan species, the beautiful, beautiful Natach. Um, it's not my photo, I borrowed it from a friend. Um, but a beautiful Natach is also, um, we have this place in Nan province, um, close to Lao border. It, it is called Doi Pu Ha, and it's pretty much the only place in Thailand where you can, where you can still see the beautiful Natach um, regularly, but it requires a bit of, um, of a trek up to the mountain to see it. And then we also have this um, Himalayan species, blue nape pitta, and it's not found further in the, in, in the western part of the north, but it's only found mostly in the east. Um, for example, Pu Suan Sai, which is the first um, place where this bird was, um, was discovered in Thailand, and a few other places like Pu Sang National Park or um, few places in um, surrounding provinces where you can find this um, very localized species. And so far it's still the most mysterious and um, the least um, known pitta in Thailand. And then in pretty much in the same habitat like at Pu Sun National Park in um, Lui province, which is also bordering Lao, we have this short-tailed parrot bill, which is a, a bird that has that, that is very, very localized, and it can only be found in just a few places in Thailand. It's a very tiny bird, and uh, it's also very difficult to find in the field because of its size. It's about a size of like just like a sunbird, very small, and they, it moves very quickly along with the um, the mixed species flock. And, but at Pu Son Sai, where um, this photo was taken, um, there's a, a, a sort of bird bath. Um, it's not exactly man-made. Um, it's like a natural area where the birds like to come and bath. And, and from time to time, this 
um, the short-tailed parrot bills also visit the bird bath and it gives you the opportunity to see and to photograph um, easily. And then there's another species of parrot bill in the eastern part of the north, where um, which is found only at um, uh, Pu Luang Wildlife Sanctuary, also in Lei Province, um, not that far from Pu, Pu Sun Sai. Um, it's called the black-eared parrot bill. Um, so currently, um, the, there's still um, taxonomic issue. Um, some list still treats it as um, subspecies of black throat parrot bill, but um, some also, including the um, BCST Thai bird checklist, we split it as the black eared parrot bill because of the um, genetic um, uh, differences. And then I'll move on to the Northeast or in Thailand, we call um, Isan region. So this area is um, the driest area in Thailand, the driest region. So it's pretty much um, covered in um, covered with uh, dry evergreen forest, deciduous forest, and in the plains, it's mostly turned into rice fields. And um, in along the border, there's Mekong River, which is which divides Thailand and Laos. And then um, in the northeastern region, we have this very uh, iconic species, especially for Thailand, because it's also named after the country's name, um, the Siamese fireback. And um, so this bird um, can be found in uh, a lot of forests, actually. Um, and it's been in, um, well, in the past, people used to go to Khao Yai National Park to see this bird. And because of the increasing of the tourists and a lot of human activities in the park, so it become a bit difficult to find it. Um, so a lot of people also go to see this bird in Sakera, um, uh Wildlife Research um, Unit. I cannot remember the full name of it, but yeah. At, at that place, you can also find this um, pheasant quite easily because they are so used to people. And that's also where I photographed this bird. And the, well, the photo doesn't show, but um, the, it got the name Fireback because it has this fiery orange um, patch on the rump where the male um, uses to, to show, to display to the, to the female. And then pretty much in the same habitat where um, the Siamese fireback is found, we have the coral-built ground cuckoo, um, which is another um, difficult bird to see. Well, um, there are places where you, you can um, regularly see it, but it's not easy to see because it's very shy. For example, like Khao Yai National Park, where um, birders um, visit very often. And I've also seen it at Puhia Wildlife Sanctuary. And similar, uh, it might look similar to the pheasant, but um, this one, this bird is, uh, it belongs to the cuckoo family. And well, interestingly, it also um, nests up on a tree. And I photographed this one at um, Khao Yai National Park, where there's a place where the birds used to come out to feed, but then um, not in the recent years. So, it, so right now you might need to try your luck on along the road, which sometimes you can you can see this bird crossing the road or coming out near the road as well. And then also um, in the forest in the northeastern part. Of Thailand, you can also find this um, where it's pretty much a recent split, the Austin's brown hornbill. So in the past, um, we used to call it just the brown hornbill, but now um, the brown hornbill is split into two different species. So the one in the northeast is called the Austin's brown hornbill, and this one is a male um, from Khao Yai National Park, which is pretty much the easiest place and the most accessible place where you can find this um, this bird in Thailand. 
and it's a male because it has this all this white um, on the cheek and on the throat, different to the other uh, the other species of horn of brown hornbill. And moving to the um, to the wetlands habitat, uh, we have the um, we have a reintroduction program of Saras crane in Buriram province, which is um, in the southern part of the northeast. So Saras crane used to be um, extinct in Thailand, but um, well extinct in the wild, but we still had some of them in captivity. So starting from that, um, the zoolog zoological park organization of Thailand, they um, started the breeding program and successfully um, reintroduced these birds just um, within five years ago in Buriram province. So they released these birds into um, several uh, reservoirs in Buriram. And right now, those birds that, um, that were released, um, they, they are now breeding and they are now nesting and um, producing offspring um, in, uh, in the wild. So if you go to, um, for example, Hoi Jarake Mark um, Reservoir in Buriram, you can easily see um, the Saras cranes there as well. And there you, there's also this um, Saras crane center where you can visit and then ask for information about where where about to find the, um, the Saras crane. And then um, along the Mekong River, uh, we have this very localized bird um, called the Mekong wagtail, which is found well only um, in the Mekong River for Thailand. And um, the bird is um, well because of a lot of development um, uh, along the Mekong River basin. So this bird has been um, becoming more difficult to find and because Mekong, Mekong River is now, um, well, it's not naturally um, flooded. So the flow is not natural. So it also affects a lot of um, species that live along the Mekong River, including the Mekong wagtail as well. And along the Mekong River, there's also this great thickney, um, which is, um, pretty much um, the only place where um, this bird is still found regularly is in um, Ubon Ratchathani province, um, along with uh, same as um, the Mekong wagtail as well. So this place um, is pretty much the only place where you can go and find both species together. And then I'm moving to the central part of Thailand. And the habitat here in the central area of Thailand is pretty much just vast open area of wetlands and rice fields. And there's, we have large river deltas connecting um, uh, big rivers um, into the Gulf of Thailand. And also among those plains, there are a few scattered limestone mountain ranges. And along those mountain limestone mountain ranges is where you can find one of the very few Thai endemic species, the Rufus limestone babbler. So um, just a few years ago, um, it's, it's known just as a subspecies of limestone wren babbler, but um, now most people agree to split it as a different species, making it um, an endemic bird of Thailand. Um, so the Rufus limestone babbler is only found in just few provinces with um, limestone mountains and the best, um, not the best, but well, the most visited area where people go to, to see this bird because it's the most accessible area is in um, Wat Praputabad Noi in Saraburi province, which is also along um, the way, um, which is also along the way to go to Khao Yai National Park. So that's pretty much where most people go to see this bird. So it's different from um, 
the other limestone babbler, which is called the grayish limestone babbler, um, by its um, more rufous chestnut tinged plumage. And it's also smaller and it has shorter tail and the song, the songs are completely different. And since we have a lot of rice fields, um, during the winter time, there are a lot of um, wintering raptors uh, coming to, um, to spend the winter in central Thailand. There are a few places where you can uh, visit and expect to see um, these raptors. For example, uh, Bak Pli Paddies, which is also close to Khao Yai. And a lot of birders go there because it's convenient. And you can find the greater spotted eagle um, every winter. And also um, the paddy fields in Nong Pla Lai in Pechaburi <laughs> province, which is not far from uh, Gengkajan as well, where you can find it. And apart from the greater spotted eagle, of course, we have other species like this Eastern Imperial Eagle or, um, and also the steppe eagle, a lot of black kites. And in central Thailand, it's also the, um, the area where you can find a lot of water birds. And the trend of large water birds in Thailand has been, um, has been improving over the past um, few decades. Uh, I think partly owing to the, um, the success in the conservation program in Cambodia, in Ton Le Sap, which is the biggest um, nesting colony of large water birds in Southeast Asia. So a lot of, we get a lot of paint historics and spot bill pelicans um, coming to Thailand during the wet season nowadays. And I think it's also partly from, um, from, the, uh, from the birds that, uh, from, from the zoos, that um, that have these birds as free, free flying birds, so they also go out and then they breed, and then um, so they that help increase overall population of these large water birds. So right now, um, a scene like this with thousands of um, painted storks feeding together is not that difficult in Thailand anymore. And here's the spot bill pelican. We can find these birds, these two species, um, pretty much throughout the central plains. But there are a few places where you can find them um, more. For example, like Bung Borapet in Nakhon Sawan province, or um, like this photo of painted stork. I photographed it um, in Pechaburi. So if you you um, you're probably familiar um, with Pak um, or Lam Pak Bia, where people go to see the spoonbill sandpiper. So that's pretty much the, in the same within the same area where you can also find these large water birds. And probably the one that people are not paying attention to as much is the um, the long-tailed shrike. So we have this local subspecies Longicordatus, and it's one of the species that has been declining so much over um, just the past few decades. Uh, so it used to be a common bird even in Bangkok, but, um, but right now we're not exactly sure what caused the decline, but now it's, uh, it's a pretty scarce and very localized bird. And this subspecies has very long tail and all black cap and it's only found in the central um, plains of Thailand and um, Cambodia. And going to the temples in central Thailand. So um, Thailand is also well known for a lot of our temples. And at these, some of, at some of these temples, you can also um, find interesting birds too. For example, um, this blossom-headed parakeet uh, from Wat Muang in Singburi province, which is not too far from Bangkok. You can find the parakeet um, nesting just within the, um, just under the roof of the, uh, of the temple. And similar, 
similarly um, in a few other temples throughout the central uh, part of Thailand, there are also other species of parakeets nesting as well. For example, the red-breasted parakeet and the Alexandrian parakeet as well. And the spoonbill sandpiper, the spoony, probably the most um, well-known bird in Thailand. So I guess most people have seen the spoonbill sandpiper in Thailand because it's the, the most accessible place um, to visit. And here in Thailand, we have pretty much two, two main um, sites where you go and see the spoony. So the first one is um, Bakthale, which is in Pechaburi province. And it's the area where BCST um, does a lot of um, conservation uh, activities there. Uh, just last year, we bought um, an area of about eight hectares just to um, create um, a feeding site for a spoonbill sandpiper. And another place where you can also see the spoonbill sandpiper regularly is in Kokham, which is a bit closer to Bangkok. It's just about um, an hour drive or an hour and a half drive from Bangkok. So it's very convenient for um, visiting birders that might not have a lot of time to um, go visit the place and then tick the spoonie. And another, and another interesting species that was, um, that, uh, well, it was just recently, um, uh, was split by all the checklists is the white-faced plover. And in um, Thailand, there's a place in Lampak Bia, which is um, the area of sand, sandy beach and a sand spit where um, the white-faced plover can be seen regularly in winter and mostly mixing with the um, Kentish plovers and Malaysian plovers. And apart from the birds, um, not many people know that um, we actually have whales not so far from Bangkok. So you can actually do um, a whaling trip while you're, um, you visit Thailand or Bangkok for just a few days. Um, so um, you can either take a boat out from um, Samut Sakhon near Koh Kham where the Spuni can be found, or you can even take a boat um, from further down south in Lampak Bia to go out to the Gulf and then see the whale. So the species that we have regularly here is the bride's whale. And while going out to see the whales, you can also um, uh, see some seabirds as well. Well, there might not be as many as in open sea area, but from time to time, we get interesting species like the skuas, um, frigate birds. And actually right now, we just only learned that, um, that the inner, inner gulf of Thailand is probably um, a regular oversummering site for Aleutian terns which is um, a, a pretty recent addition to the Thai bird checklist. Uh, so you can see the Aleutian turn here in the inner Gulf of Thailand as well. And then moving on to the Southeast. Uh, so this area is um, closer to the Cambodian border and there's a mix of habitats, the hill evergreen forest and also um, islands in the eastern part of the Gulf where you can see a lot of um, migratory birds, especially in spring. For example, the fairy pitta, where um, it's regularly seen in Kok uh, Mannai, which is a, a very, very small island in the eastern part of the Gulf of Thailand. So every year during um, mid-April to early May, we can see this fairy pitta crossing um, the Gulf of Thailand and, and Gok Man Nai is um, probably the best place to see it. And on the same island, we have the um, quite a lot of Japanese paradise flycatchers passing through as well. So it's one of the, the most interesting migrants that pass through Gok Man Nai. Um, so not only these two species, but there are a lot 
more um, the uh, passerines that that pass through Gok Man Nai to the um, to the eastern part of Thailand. For example, the yellow rumped flycatcher, Siberian blue robin, uh, brown-chested jungle flycatcher, um, mukimaki flycatcher. A lot of flycatchers that use this uh, route to migrate through Thailand. And a mountain in the in the very very far southeastern part of Thailand on the Cambodian border, we have this um, endemic race of chestnut-headed partridge. Um, in the past, it used to be um, treated as a different species called the Siamese partridge, um, but now people mostly um, treat it as a subspecies of the chestnut-headed partridge. But it looks very different from the one in Cambodia because uh, it doesn't actually have a chestnut head. It's pretty, it's more of like sandy brown head. And then we move on to the western part of the country. So in the western part of Thailand is bordering Myanmar. And we have this very long mountain range um, in between the two countries. And so there's a mix of um, a group, um, a mix of group of birds that can be found here in the West. So for example, uh, at Gengkaja National Park in Pechaburi, uh, you, can, you can see that there are, there's a mix of species that, can, um, that are like Sundaic species, similar to Malaysia, Indonesia, but also at the same time, there are also species that are similar to like Myanmar, Cambodia, being found in the, in, in the very same area. And um, moving to this, um, the highlight species. So Rufus snake hornbill is one of the species where people go to see in the western part of Thailand. And Mae Wong National Park is um, the most visited area where people go to see this um, uh, rare hornbill in Thailand. And the other brown hornbill that we have in Thailand. So I talked about the Austin's brown hornbill earlier. And this, this is it, the, um, the, another one, um, the Tickles brown hornbill, which is found in the western part of the country, especially um, Gengkajan, where, where uh, people usually see it um, regularly. And this one is a male, uh, and it has all brownish, um, rufous brown neck. In, um, unlike the Austin's brown hornbill. And at Gengkajan, there's also um, a very uh, uh, localized population of ratchet-tailed tree pie, a bird that is mostly found further in the east, like in uh, Vietnam or Southern China. But here in Thailand, there's a very, um, uh, small population found in the hill evergreen forest in Gengkaja National Park and a few other mountain tops nearby. Um, but um, sadly, uh, the, the road that, is, uh, that leads up to the area where you can find this tree pie is now currently under con construction. So it's closed and so you probably have to wait <laughs> I don't know how long for it to reopen and then um, the bird can be, uh, that area can be accessed again. And at Gengkajan, one of the um, species that visiting birders um, normally uh, want to see is the eared pitta, which is um, a bird that is found in um, most of the uh, Indo-Chinese, in, in, um, throughout Indochina, but Thailand is probably the easiest place to see this bird because there are a few um, sites in Gengkajan or Khao Yai where the birds can be regularly seen and easier to photograph. And this one is a male. The female has um, a, a duller mask and head. And apart from Pitta, Kankajan is also um, famous for a lot of broadbills. 
Um, so when you visit Gangajan National Park in Pechaburi, you can actually see all the species of broadbills in Thailand. And silver-breasted broadbill is one of them, and it's the it's the the most common species there. And then there's a um, the less colorful one. This one is um, a pretty recent split. It's called the Baker's booble, but um, some well, uh, if you use eBird, um, still treats it as a subspecies of olive booble. Um, but for our checklist, we split it as um, a different species based on um, the DNA. So um, the Baker's booble used to be um, uh, a subspecies of gray-eyed booble, but now since the split, you can only find this species Along the um, along the western part of Thailand, down to the um, to the south, and we talked about the other limestone babbler, and then we have this one, the grayish limestone babbler, which is found um, in many um, limestone mountain ranges in the west. For example, this one was um, photographed at. Which is actually not far from uh, Hoi Kha Heng Wildlife Sanctuary, which is one of the most visited birding destinations in Thailand. Um, so if you go a bit um, further, you can also find this um, uh, very uh, this localized species, the great limestone babbler as well. And also, um, this one is also another uh, pretty well, little known species for Western Thailand, the rufous-headed uh, parrotbill. Um, so far, we only know that it's found at um, Mamoy National Park in Tha province, which is right at the border um, between Thailand and Myanmar. Um, so at this place, you can find this rufous-headed parrotbill as well as the similar um, uh, black-browed parrotbill or pale-billed parrotbill and also a few other species that prefer bamboo forest, for example, the colored babbler or red, red billed simta babbler. And then moving to the, um, the last region in Thailand that I'm gonna talk about is the southern part of Thailand or the, the Thai Peninsula, which pretty much share the same set of species with the um, Peninsula Malaysia or Sumatra, and um, so mainly the habitat is Sundai forest and also mangrove forest along the coast. And then there's this endemic species, um, which is also another split, um, a pretty recent split from blue throated barbet. And this one is called the turquoise throated barbet or another name is Chersonis barbet. And um, this one is only found in just one mountain range in Southern Thailand, the Khao Luang uh, mountain range. And um, so most birders have seen it um, while doing the trek, um, doing the hike up to the Khao Luang uh, summit. And it looks kind of, in between blue-throated and black-browed barbet, in my opinion. And then in winter, Southern Thailand is um, the place where um, large blue flycatcher, which is also a pretty recent split, uh, split from um, hill blue flycatcher. So Southern Thailand is the place where this um, little known um, blue flycatcher winters during um, the winter months. And there, but there are just a few places in the south where you can find it regularly. Um, for example, Si Panga National Park, where a lot of people visit, and a few other sites in Panga and Ranong. But overall, it's still a very um, mysterious bird, and and it's not easy to find. And then there are other well-known and uh, colorful species that a lot of visiting birders would like to see. For example, the green broadbill, which is um, one of the most attractive broadbills, um, in my opinion. And there are a lot of 
places where you can find it in southern Thailand. For example, Grungxing uh, Waterfall, which is very easily accessed, and um, a lot of birders have been there. And when there when there are uh, fruiting trees, it's not that difficult to find the green broadbills there. And southern Thailand still has pretty um, healthy population of great argus. So despite all the other species of um, pheasant or partridge being mostly um, extinct in southern Thailand, the great argus can actually adapt to um, to the um, to the habitat that is left. So mostly the um, the forest in the lowland forest in southern Thailand is gone, uh, mostly because of the rubber plantation and the oil palm plantation, and so the the primary forest is mostly left on the on the hills, on the mountains, and great argus are still thriving in those sort of habitats. So there are a few places in southern Thailand where you can go and you can photograph this great argus at the, um, the display site, for example, in Si Panga National Park or in, um, or in Satun Province, um, in Taleban National Park in Satun Province, which I photographed this photo. And there are a lot of species of hornbills in the south. Um, and the most globally threatened species of hornbill is um, no doubt the helmeted hornbill. And in Thailand, we still have a pretty healthy population in um, around the Khao Sok Klong Sang uh, forest complex. So that area is pretty much access only can can only be accessed by boat. So if you go in um, by boat, you can actually see the helmeted hornbill or hear them pretty um, often there. And then to the mangrove forest, we have a lot of uh, species that, that are um, quite localized and can only be seen in the south. For example, the brown winged kingfisher, which is a species that can only be seen in mangrove along the western side of, um, uh, of the peninsula. So on the Andaman, Andaman Sea side. And so this bird can be seen all the way from uh, Ranong province down to uh, the Thai Malay border in um, Satun. So uh, yeah, and then another species that is um, well known for the southern um, Thailand is the Nico Nicobar pigeon. But for this one, you have to go out to the island. Um, mostly people go out to uh, Similan Island or Surin Island to see the, um, the Nicobar pigeon, but it can also be found in few other islands, but they are more um, rare in those islands. So once you reach those, um, some of those islands, for example, Similan Island, you can actually find them um, walking around like um, chickens there because they are so tame and they haven't been hunted by people there. And I guess that's pretty much it for my presentation. And I'm trying to keep the time. So sorry if I've been too fast or I missed out some of the information. So I guess we're open for questions. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ayuan. It's really an excellent presentation. Yes, yes, it's very informative. The rich information. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, any questions for uh, are you what? Uh, I guess most people have already been to Thailand, so I don't know. I probably hello. say telling you all the information that you already know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you are, please up your screen, please. Then we can see everybody here. Sure. Thank you. That's great. Yes. Yeah, I what? Hi. Hi. Uh, hi, Kusum. Is, uh, Kian, yeah, hi. 
is uh, Priyanka Chan still closed or only a part is closed? Um, Priyanka Chan National Park. Yeah. Uh, well, because of the, the coronavirus, so all national parks were closed up until last month. I think right now Kenka Chan is open, but and along with most of the national parks, but there are still a few national parks that are still closed. Uh huh. Yeah, but now Kenka Chan is open. Yeah. Yeah, because when I went, uh, I came to Thailand in 2018, and yeah. at that time also Kenka Chan was closed. Ah. And the roads were upset at that time. Yeah. So. Um, because Kenka Chan is uh, closed every year uh, in wet season. I think they close for about three months. Uh, okay. So in October, I think from August to October, it's closed. And then October in, to October. Yeah, November. But then this year is different because of the coronavirus. Um, not really sure what the schedule is for this year <laughs> but normally yeah it's closed for three months in the wet season okay thank you hey, thank you kusum yeah welcome okay questions yes uh yeah. Hiroko, please Yes, please. Hello, uh, my name is Hiroko Kamoto from Wild Bird Society of Japan, and I have a question about uh, barn swallows in Thailand uh, because uh, barn swallows. Okay. Uh, because uh, we are conducting a barn swallows breeding survey with local students, local school children in Japan. Um, uh, we have uh, limited information about the uh, wintering areas of a barn swallows. So, how common barn swallows in Thailand? Well, it's very common. Uh, but, um, well, I don't have any knowledge about where those swallows are from. I mean, mm -hmm. we have also resident barn swallows in northern Thailand as well. Mm -hmm. So, but in winter time, we get a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I don't think we know for sure where these birds come from. So mm -hmm. I don't know if some of them might come from Japan as well. Yeah. Or I don't know, from China. Yeah. I, I don't think anyone has really studied the, this the barn mm -hmm. swallow. Have you tagged the bird, ring the bird? And no. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, I think at least our. Uh, yeah, our government mm -hmm. has a um, monitoring program on barn mm -hmm. swallows, yeah, but I don't know if they have retrieved the birds from, with, with uh, lake rings or flags from other countries mm -hmm. or not. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Hey, uh, are you please. Yes, please, Mike. Uh, David Hinckley would like to ask what's your favorite field guide to the birds of Thailand or which <laughs> books would you recommend? Okay, <laughs> what's my favorite? I don't have a favorite, but I would like to recommend, well, there's a new um, a Lynx bird guide, um, Lynx edition, um, Birds of Thailand, which is also uh, written by my friend, uh, Wichi Anan and it's the most recent um, bird book on Thailand. So, um, so the information in that book would be the most updated, yeah, taxonomic wise or distribution, yeah. Yeah, so the links edition, yeah. Thank you. And uh, Luan from the Philippines wants to know about uh, Gurney Sita. Uh -huh. is, uh, uh, Krabi is the best place to see Gunipita, and uh, are there other places to see them? Well, sadly not. Um, well, in Thailand, I don't think you can find Gurney's Pita anymore. So 
sorry, um, you probably have to go to Myanmar. <laughs> sorry, really sorry to hear that. Yeah, so I think the most recent um, survey, which is probably one or two years ago, um, only found like three birds or something like that, three to four birds, which are in like in in an in the area where most people cannot access, like really, really deep in the forest. And even in that sort of habitat, there there are so few birds left. So it's yeah, better to go to Myanmar, sorry. <laughs> Hey, then go to Myanmar. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and any other question? Okay, it's really about time. So uh, thank you very much, Ayuwa, for being with us. This is a really great presentation from you. We know so much more about body in Thailand. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone. Okay, before we go, let's take a group photo, please. Okay. okay. Those of you staying behind Thank the you, are you what? Turn on your camera. <laughs> okay. I know. Yes. Oh, Carlos. Hey, hey hello. You, friend. Hey, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You, you know, I, I want to say something. I'm sorry, I'm behind the scenes right now. Uh, okay. I love the presentation sure. of silence. But besides timber, are we going to go and eat some good Thailand food when we go, when we go there? Oh, of course. Thai food is the best. You can pretty much get good food <laughs> anywhere. Know, every time we travel, because we don't have Thai food in Panama, uh, but every uh -huh. time we travel anywhere in the world, the first thing my wife and I do, we look for a Thai restaurant. Oh. You know, and, then, and then when we go there, we like to meet the chef to see the real Thailand, you know, from Thailand. And I asked him, what, what part of Thailand are you from? Well, I'm and from then, the north. I don't, I don't know Thailand, but I just asked just, <laughs> that question. But thank you for uh, the beautiful presentation. Yeah. We're really thank great, you. But really, really nice. Good to see you guys. All, everybody's really great seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's be ready for the group photo, okay? Look at the camera, smile, and please do not move. Okay, one, two, three. Thank you very much. Uh, Next week. Our group thank you. Tell us about Bye. Sri Lanka. Nice to meet you guys. So, see Bye. you guys next week. Our, next our week speaker is here tonight with us. <laughs> thank you, Ayua. Thank, thank you. Everybody. Bye.